Good afternoon. Hey. Let's wake up, people. Come on. This is Sunday afternoon. It's super nice and sunny outside. So let's try to bring some, some brightness and some energy inside because otherwise I would have just want to run out. All right? So, um, all right. My slide is up. All that info, um, thank you very much. You know, you, these things are written, and then when you hear them read out loud, you're always like, wow, it sounds like a bit much, right? Um, anyways, so my name is Nick Landry, and yeah, all my info is right here. Email, blog, GitHub. You can sense a theme here. I'm known as Active Nick. And um, basically, I'm here to talk about probably one of the most exciting topics there is in technology right now, which is mixed reality. Now, what is mixed reality? That's what I'm going to try to answer over the next half hour or so. Uh, this is a session that I can normally spend like two hours, a full day, talking about. So, of course, 30 minutes is going to be a little constrained. I'm going to try to leave some time for Q&A afterwards. And also, I'll be available to answer more questions uh, after the session as well. So, quickly about me. Uh, you already heard the, the bio. The bottom line is I'm a geek, and I'm paid to geek out. Um, and that's basically what I do. And then once I build something cool, I go tell developers about it. So my, my role is primarily to work with developers, so people that write code for a living. So just curious. I know this is more of a creative event, but who actually here writes code for a living on a regular basis? Cool. Excellent. There's some of you. Don't worry. Not going to show code today for all the others. No need to run out and storm the doors. Uh, it's all good. So uh, yeah, I've been doing mobile development for quite a while. Uh, 15 years, actually, or as I like to call it, five years before the iPhone came out. And um, so I've been doing this for a while. I was an entrepreneur as well. I do a lot of IoT stuff, both client-side with devices, electronics, server-side with the cloud. For years, I've been specializing also on computer speech, natural language processing, um, uh, computer assistance, bots, and what we call basically the overall scheme of conversations as a platform. Um, I, will, I have a background in GIS as well. I'm a .NET guy at heart. And now for the last, I would say, year or so, I've been focusing a lot more on mixed reality, also some VR stuff, development of games and experiences in 3D with things like Unity and so on. So I'm not a game professional, so I'm not like a professional game developer that's been working on AAA titles. Um, and the reason why I tell people this also is because I don't want people to think that to get into that space that you have to have that background. I mean, it helps. If somebody knows Unity today from a game development point of view, I'll tell them, like, come over to our industry. We pay better, and uh, we need a lot of you guys. Because, uh, yeah, I know game developers that, you know, we all know it's a tough industry, and it's very fascinating. It's fun, it's cool, and everything, but it's tough. And right now, in, in IT with VR and mixed reality, there's a huge demand for people that know development tools for developers, for, for game developers like you know, 3D, DirectX, Unity, things like that. Uh, I am not a member of the HoloLens team, by the way. I work closely with those folks, but I'm right here based in New York in the developer experience team. Uh, oh, and by the way, quick plug, I run a meetup. For those of you that do like code, I run a meetup uh, in New York called the Microsoft Makers and App Developers of New York City, MMAD NYC. So I greatly encourage you to sign up. It's free, we serve pizza and everything, and we also always have a lot of fun. There's an equivalent in Jersey for the Jersey folks. It's basically the same thing, MMAD NJ. All right, uh, feel free to take pictures during this session to tweet the photos and everything. Um, I, I would just appreciate no videos during the session. All right, I know they're recording it for the, the event, but personal videos, I would appreciate if you could skip that. Now, uh, what I'm going to try to uh, focus more, I'm going to, the third bullet here, I'm not really going to spend any time on this today because this is not exactly the right crowd, but we're going to talk primarily around what is mixed reality, an overview of the hardware itself. You probably heard of this thing, the HoloLens. Um, so I'm going to show you a demo of that. I'm going to talk briefly about kind of like the developer capabilities, uh, what developers can do, but we're not really going to dive into the code uh, because time doesn't really allow and it's not exactly the right audience. Now, Mixed reality. What is mixed reality? Is this just like another word term that Microsoft invented so we can be different from everybody else? No, first of all, we did not coin the term. The term comes from the 90s. I forget who coined it. Uh, it's a term that we've adopted because it describes much better what we do compared to the other things that are out there. Uh, just to give you an idea, so who here is familiar with um, physical reality? <laughs> Everybody should be raising your hands, by the way, because you're in it. All right? You're living it. If not, of course, when you're on your phone, you can argue that you're ignoring most of it. But, um, yeah, but the reason why I bring this up is because we, we experience physical reality through our senses, 
through you know, sight, sounds, touch, everything. Of course, in a city like New York, smells and tastes like abundant. Um, digital reality is this other side where we're creating all these, this artificial reality that we can experience through our senses. And it's about tricking our senses. So in the end, mixed reality is a blending of the two. It's not going full into digital reality or uh, just staying in mixed reality. It's about, about integrating both together. And if we look at the mixed reality spectrum, it's actually a pretty wide spectrum. If you look at the, the full view here, you basically have one end physical reality, the other side you've got digital reality, and then most of that can be technically covered, unless the, you're just a purist at the ends, by mixed reality. And to do so, if you look at, for example, something called augmented reality. Augmented reality is some, a lot of people are mixing the terms augmented and mixed reality, and I find that if you're doing AR, it's either extremely limiting, and if you're doing MR, don't call it AR because you're doing a disservice to what you're doing. AR is basically just like a heads-up display, an extra layer of information that you're putting on top of your world, whether you're viewing that world through a headset or whether you're viewing that world through a phone and a camera. And at the other end, we've got virtual reality, which is the pure immersive experience. And the idea is to completely shield you from the real world. And you don't want to have... You want, you want anything to do with the real world. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to see it. You don't want to feel it. You just want to see this virtual world, and which can be very immersive and a lot of fun, especially for things like gaming. But, of course, for productivity, collaboration, it can be a little challenging. Just a quick, quick, quick show of hands. Who here has access or regular access to any kind of VR, whether it's mobile VR, Oculus, um, Steam, whatever, Vive, or on their phone, maybe. All right, so a lot of you have either tried it or used Now, I would like to know who here actually uses VR freely when there's other people around them. So not that many hands. There's a few of you that are a little more daring, I would say, to, to not use another word, um, that are actually doing it. But the bottom line is, when I ask this question, especially to groups where there's a good mixed bag of VR and MR people, the bottom line is the people that do a lot of MR, they have no problem. Like, yeah, I can see everything around me in mixed reality, so I have no problem using it. Because with mixed reality, what we've done at Microsoft is basically we've taken mixed reality and we've baked it directly in the operating system. So instead of being a extra layer that goes on top of things, we are basically integrating it directly in the operating system so that it can be a developer service that anybody can use to create new experiences and new applications and new games. And with this, we have different headsets from us, from our partners, that use six degrees of freedom, spatial mapping, inside-out tracking, and things like that. And the idea is that we have two types of mixed reality headsets. We have the, the holographic headsets, which today is pretty much HoloLens. That's the only one that supports this. This is the world's first holographic computer, but not the last. Well, the first untethered and self-contained head-mounted, I would say. Um, and then we also have another spectrum of mixed reality devices that are immersive. Some people call them more like VR. It's true they can be associated to VR, but the idea is they also offer six, degree of freedom, or six degrees of freedom and without having um, the need to set up like external you know, markers and posts and, and, and complicated setup to track things around. So to do this, for example, you've got immersive headsets, immersive MR headsets. We already have six partners that have announced support for this, and they're coming this year. Uh, they're not out yet. You can already pre-order the Acer and the HP for $299 and $329, and you need a computer for those. You tether to a computer, or you can buy the HoloLens today, which is already available, and a year later, we still stand alone in this, in this field right now, uh, which is available today. So, uh, talking about the Microsoft HoloLens, who's tried HoloLens before here? Wow, lots of people here. Okay, so for a lot of you, either this is going to be old news or maybe giving you a little bit of extra information as to how the sausage is made. Um, so, the idea of the HoloLens is this is a, a fully untethered holographic computer that you wear on your head. And yes, I will do a live demo in front of you guys so that you can see what I see. Um, and it completely redefines how we're going to interact with computers. 
The, the idea is that you can enhance the real world with these holograms. You can use it as a better way of interacting with people, of connecting with them, communicating with them, doing training. It's a better way of exploring content as well because you don't have, you're not confined just to a small screen. It, the world around you is your canvas. But we're not replacing that world. We're just, I don't want to use augmenting it, <laughs> but we're, we're basically sprucing it up with extra holograms that we're putting all over the place. But at the same time, this is, this is the most advanced technology we've ever created, and this is just the beginning. This is the best that Microsoft has. And it, again, it's just the beginning of a journey as we go into a new iteration of like new types of computers that, that you can use for all sorts of things. So the HoloLens from up close here, um, this is uh, an untethered computer. It's technically the world's first untethered, self-contained, head-mounted holographic computer. This is not an accessory. This is the full computer that you're wearing on your head. You're basically wearing a Windows computer on your head. You're not tethered to anything. The, the cord here is simply because when I do my demo later, it's going to be able to easily display what I see on my laptop. Uh, I could do it over wireless, but when there's that many people in the room, the air bands get clogged and it affects the, the broadcast. It works completely untethered. It's got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to connect to the cloud and devices, just like any other computer, but it doesn't need them for the holographic capabilities. So you're untethered. You don't need to be connected to a PC or a phone or anything to use it. If we look inside of the HoloLens, you'll find like a whole array of sensors, accelerometers, depth camera, RGB camera, uh, uh, infrared cameras, and uh, microphones, and a whole bunch of sensors that are capturing information in real time. And really, it's going to be in real time. Because if it's not in real time, the holograms will shift in your space. This is how we can give you inside-out tracking, six degrees of freedom, where you can walk around and your holograms are pinned in place. And then we have these lenses through which you see the world and your holograms. So this is not like a transparent LCD or anything. This is more of a projection system where we're literally beaming light photons that are reflected onto those lenses and into your eyes. So you are truly seeing new photons, basically new particles of light that are creating, to, created to see these holograms. And we create those in 3D using a stereoscopic display. And that's why we measure things like the interstitial pupillary distance, which is the distance between your two pupils, so we can create the perfect image for you and give you a true sense of depth and 3D. By the way, I see a lot of people taking pictures of the slides. This is great. Uh, all my slides are already online, by the way. It's actually a much more advanced version of the deck, which covers developer content. So if you want this, it's on my SlideShare. The link is at the end. It's slideshare.net slash activenick. You guessed it. Um, so if you take pictures, at least make sure I'm in it. You know? So ta-da. Um, beyond that, uh, we're capturing so much information in real time with this that um, there's no... CPU or GPU mobile today that can actually crunch that much data in a mobile device. I mean, this is a, this is a lot of tough engineering problems in this. We have a new type of silicon, which is called the HPU. This is the first time in Microsoft history that we've actually designed our own chip. The HPU is the holographic processing unit, and it's based on years and years of research in machine learning and spatial understanding, all boiled down to a new piece of silicon that can basically analyze the world and crunch that data to give you a nice spatial mesh of the world around you. And then beyond that, we also have spatial sound because seeing holograms is one thing, but you want to be able to hear them as well. You'll notice that the little speakers right here are actually sitting above the ears. They're not cupping your ears just like, for example, virtual reality would do. The idea, again, is to integrate the sounds with the existing sounds of your world just like we're integrating the holograms with the existing sites of your world. So we don't want to obfuscate anything. We want to blend the two together. So enough chat. Let's take a look at what the HoloLens can do. So as I said, so this is completely untethered. It works completely in real time. But for the purposes of the demo, since I want to be able to um, give you an effective uh, demo, let me close YouTube. We don't need it. There we go. Let me make sure that I'm on. I'm going to tether myself via my crew USB because otherwise I would have to beam over Wi-Fi. And even if I'm on my own hotspot, um, sometimes the Wi-Fi band gets clogged. And uh, it's just laws of physics. And uh, we can't change those yet. We're working on it. All right. So let me make sure. 
This is good. By the way, before I start the presentation, um, serious question here. Are there any people in a room that are subject to seizures whenever they see like fast moving images in front of them? We're good? Because the last thing I want to do is, is cause like a medical incident. But it's just that you have no idea how much your head moves until you strap a camera to your forehead. So what you're going to see is basically what I see, but with the holograms will be fit in. And that's why uh, we, I'm also on a few seconds delay. What I see is in real time, but by the time the image goes down, gets processed, we're also doing a little bit of image stabilization to make it a little less nauseating for you guys to watch. So that's why if you see me turn my head, there's going to be a few seconds delay before you see the image here. But for me, of course, everything is instant real time. So let me start the display here, put it full screen. And if, for whatever reason, the screen freezes, and right now, uh, yeah, these spotlights are not great when it comes to this kind of projection right now because it's causing a lot of refraction. Um, if at some point the display stops here, just like wave at me or let me know, it happens, you know, that the, the whole lens continues working just fine, but the broadcast sometimes can freeze a little bit. Anyway, so this is a whole lens. Wow, okay, this is what I see. I see you guys. So that's the first thing. So I can walk around. Of course, now I'm a little tethered, so I can't move too much, but at least I can't run into things. I know that there's a chair right here, unlike VR, where I'd be like stumbling all over the place. Because this is Windows, of course, we need to have a nice start menu to launch our experience. I'm actually connected to sound here, so hopefully it's going to work, and I can bring up my start menu with uh, the bloom gesture like this. And then you can see here in front of me, I have this start menu. And then I can start like using just the standard 2D applications, if you will. So I can come, for example, and get, I could pin my email, which I won't, not in front of you guys. Um, I can pin the news. So for example, oh, sorry, let me just launch USA Today here. And it detects the walls, so it knows where the walls are. So it doesn't let me put it through the wall. I'm just going to pin it here. And now I can actually have like, a nice uh, 2D application like this. So any store app that you can get in a Windows store on this. So of course, picking a news app is a little depressing these days. So we'll, we'll just try to get over that. There you go, SNL, that's fun. Um, I can actually readjust the window if I want. I'm on a cellular network right now. That's why the performance is not awesome. But I can make it bigger if I want. Um, I don't have a big TV in my home office. So usually what I do is I just like put a big virtual screen where I can watch Netflix. You know on my, uh, or YouTube or whatever. I can bring up a browser if I want. So let's put Microsoft Edge right here. There you go. I'm putting a browser right there. And uh, anytime I have to type, I can use voice as well if I want. So you can see how you can quickly create an experience. And look how when I move around, everything is basically locked into place. How does it do this? Because it's actually scanning the room in real time right now. This is how it knows. If you want to know what the HoloLens sees, just click on something empty, and then you will see a nice spatial mesh. Now, black surfaces, like the black chair right now, not great for spatial mapping. But you can see here, it can actually see the step here, down there. And you don't have to click for the scanning to work, by the way. It does it. This is just for you to see it. Oh, what do we have here? OK, so I have a, a small pet tiger. Let me just click on my pet tiger. And let me open up the box right now to adjust him a little bit. There you go, adjust. So this is the hologram app that we have on it. I'm going to rotate him around like this so he can stay there uh, and place him flat there. All right, so that's my pet tiger. Now, why do we call this mixed reality and not augmented reality? Because, as I said, with augmented reality, the layer of information is always on top of things. So it's not possible for a physical object to hide a virtual object, right? The virtual objects would always be on top. But here, if we look at this, we can actually see that the podium is real. See, if I click on it, it basically sees the podium. It's not like a perfect mesh. This is not something you're going to use for like perfect scanning. But the idea is that as I look down at my tiger, if I start moving behind the podium, see what happens? The tiger gets obfuscated. I can't see it anymore because the podium is in the way. See, it knows there's a podium here. So if I look behind, I can see my tiger is still there. And now my tiger is gone. You can't do this with augmented reality, folks. And it sounds like a simple example, but the world of possibilities you can create with this is amazing. 
It could be for like inspections of a building where you're basically going through and looking for problems and starting to tag different things across the building so that later, six months later, when another inspector comes to see if the work was done properly, they can actually see all the issues in the actual physical space and then re-inspect them properly instead of just looking at a notepad. Let me show you another cool scenario for education, for example. Um, we have a project called Galaxy Explorer. And Galaxy Explorer is uh, it's an open source project. We polled the community and we said, what would you like us to build? They chose this. Our team built it in six weeks. And then we released the source code online to teach people how to build this. Oh, let me just start it. There we go. This is Share Your Idea, a community-based program where you come up with the idea and we build it in six weeks. We then open source it back to the community for you to learn, add new features, and make the experience better. We can't wait to see what you create. Let's start your journey by pinning the earth in the center of your room. All right, so I got the earth. I'll place it right here. Great, this is our home. But we are a small part of a bigger picture, which is a small part of an even bigger picture. The Milky Way galaxy is made up of hundreds of billions of stars and solar systems. You can learn and explore by looking around and selecting things that interest you. So I can see the Milky Way galaxy right here. I can start tapping on things like the Crab Nebula. The Crab Nebula is the remains of a supernova which was recorded by Chinese astronomers in the year 1054. The nebula itself was later observed by the English astronomer John Bevis in 17. Let's go to the solar system. Our solar system. This familiar representation of our solar system simplifies sizes and distances so that the sun and all of the planets can be easily seen at once. Click the view button above the sun so, to talk between this So what I can see right now is basically the full solar system is basically fixed in front of me. If I don't like where it is, I can always move it around. So let me move my controls down. I can say grab it. And then I can move to say I want it elsewhere, you know. But I'm going to leave it about here since it's a good place to play with it. Um, I can actually tilt it if I want to see it in a different angle. Oh, oh no, sorry. I big zoom. Oh, I selected something. One second. Mars is slightly more than half the size of Earth with a very thin atmosphere. While today no liquid water is present on the surface, geological features suggest that it once had large-scale bodies of water. At the poles, you can see dry ice caps. So normally what I would do is I would walk water, over, but I don't have much cable to walk over right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab it again, and I'm going to bring Mars a little closer to me right now like this and put it in front of me. So Mars is about the size of a big beach ball right now, right in front of me. It's locked in space, so I can move around. I can look on one side over another. I can even look at the poles at the top. It starts clipping after a certain distance. That's up to the developer to choose the clipping distance. Like, this is a little too far. I, I usually like to pick like 30 centimeters to, uh, for clipping. And I can go back to the solar system. And then I can interact with things like, for example, tilting it. So I can say I want to tilt the solar system and I can grab it and look at it along its axis. There you go, let's just move it down just a little bit more. There you go, so now I got it right along its axis. So that's pretty cool. Oh, Uranus is right here, I can see it. So, and I see that Jupiter is down here. So let me go take a look at Jupiter right here. That's cool. So I can almost like hold it right now on my fingers. So these holograms are just like standing in front of me. They're part of my space. They are almost as real as anything else, except that I can't touch them, but they, they feel real because I can move around them. And thanks to the spatial mapping on the HoloLens, I can basically just move around and it understands where I am. And you didn't see me set up like light posts or markers or anything like that. It's actually quite powerful. Let me close my screen is back here. If I look back here, I can see my windows are back there. 
So, like, for example, my home office at home, I've got, like, a bunch of windows laid out everywhere. So whenever I put on the HoloLens, it recognizes where it is. And then all my windows are back where they were. So you can basically have a virtual workspace, if you will. And if I look down here, Pet Tiger is still here. And I can add more uh, holograms. But, of course, I'm a little limited for time. So, anyway, I just wanted to give you a quick idea of the capabilities. Let me stop this and wrap up a couple of slides. Now, the other problem is when you're bald, you get a big red band around your head when you're done with this. So it's good to have hair, I guess. Um, so I just wanted to give you a quick uh, overview of what this thing can do, how it works. Now, of course, seeing it on screen is one thing. You really have to really try it for yourself. So first of all, if you, if you want to purchase this, it's already uh, for sale in several countries. It's an English-only device. It's a full computer. The developer kit is $3,000. It's been for sale for a year now. And we also have the commercial suite, which is $5,000. It's the same hardware, but it comes with a few extra enterprise features and a different level of warranty as well. Um, if you want to try it, I would encourage you to go to HoloLensEvents.com. Uh, we actually run demos at the flagship store here on Fifth Avenue. It's not the kind of thing where you can just waltz in and ask for a demo. You have to book a slot ahead of time. They're doing some construction right now, so it's not always running. So if you go to the site and New York City is not listed, just keep going back on a regular basis. I know some people have tried it this way. Usually when it becomes available, also I notify people via my meetup. So again, if you join my meetup, it's a good way to hear about the word of what I'm talking about and what, where I'm going to be presenting and some cool news like this. So. If you've never tried it, definitely tr seeing it is, is really believing it. There's, it's not a fad or anything. Um, in my deck, there's a lot of other links, like on how to get started, the developer resources. You build with, for this using, for example, things like C++ and DirectX. Or if you're a Unity developer, like the game engine, they've partnered with us to basically create like a premium experience. I do all my HoloLens development in Unity. So it pays to have Unity skills. Um, we also have the, the headsets from Acer, HP, and others that are coming for mixed reality in immersive mode. As I said, this is available today for 3000 And um, that was, uh, sorry for WeWork, because we, uh, we had a special thing for them. And I got, if you're interested in coding, I've got some demos on my meetup right here, Holens Events MR, and that's my, my information right here. So slideshare.net is where I have all my slide decks for my session. And this slide deck is actually uh, posted right there uh, on the slideshow. So that's the one that you want. So I'm right on time at 3 o'clock. So um, yeah. I can do it uh, I just, So uh, we had in our, um, in, in our description of your talk that you were going to be talking about developing um, for HoloLens in Unity. Is that, is that part of, is that something that you were going to well, have also? Developing for Unity is a topic for developers, okay. for people that write code. Most of the people here are not. Coders. Looks so, like about half I mean, it's, some, it's something that I mean, I, I, I could have dove in, but the idea is that developing for for the Hololens in a nutshell, you you would use a tool like Unity. So who's familiar with Unity? Who's used it? Okay. So Unity is a tool. is It's a game engine. It's completely free. Uh, it's a separate company called Unity. You go to Unity3D.com, and then uh, to start coding with it, you just download Unity. The beauty is that it, since it's free, you can basically um, you can basically uh, use it as long as your game or experience makes less than $100,000 a year. And then from there, we actually give you, if you're interested in seeing just a couple extra slides on this, let me just bring one up. We have three layers of... So in the Windows Mixed Reality SDK, we give you things like the gaze input, the gestures input, the gesture input, the voice input. So gaze is where you're looking at. It's kind of like your cursor. The gestures are things like you know the tap, drag, the different gestures you can do. And then voice input, because there's a full capability for voice recognition. It's super easy. With just a few lines of code, you can enable speech recognition in this. Because since you don't have a keyboard attached, I mean, you can, but it kind of defeats the purpose. Um, you can do all your input via voice if you want. And then there's all the other things related to spatial mapping and spatial sound. But these are kind of like low-level APIs that can be a little complex for developers to use. At the top is what you have to provide. You provide the holograms themselves, like the materials, the shaders, the models, all the scripts that you would write in C-sharp, for example, in Unity, and the shaders. And to facilitate this, we actually have a great project called the Holo Toolkit. And there's a version for C++ and a version for Unity. And the Holo Toolkit gives you all these like pre-made components 
and assets like cursor prefab, sharing, uh, sharing prefab. Sharing is whenever you want, for example, two HoloLens users or more to see the same holograms. So they can collaborate whether they're in the same room or maybe even in distant rooms, if you will. And we have got all these, these utilities like a pre-made camera for it, uh, tap and place scripts, spatial mapping prefab so that without any code you can just drag and drop like the spatial, uh, the, the spatial mapper and it will automatically let you pick up the 3D mesh of the environment around you and uh, integrate this inside of your projects. So if you're, if you're interested in that topic, the slide deck actually has a lot of reference links. So for example, on the internet, if you go to our main mixed reality site, uh, if I remember correctly, so dev, oops, dev.windows.com, mixed reality. And hopefully my hotspot will cooperate. There we go. No, let me just go to developer here. We changed the links recently, so. Um, and then from there, uh, there's a section just for mixed reality. The problem is I'm not on Wi-Fi right now. Oh, this is our main build page. Yeah, we have our build resources right here. Anyway, there's, there's a section called Holographic Academy. And in those links right here, you can actually go, there we go, ak.ms slash Holographic Academy. That would be an easier link to use. The Holographic Academy is a, is a whole set of, of tutorials to help you get started, like how to get started with Unity how to do hologram. Even if you don't have a HoloLens, you can actually do it with the emulator because we have a full emulator that basically is a, it's a full virtual machine running the operating system image of Windows Mixed Reality and you can actually integrate this in your projects and start building with this before you actually buy the real hardware. You can test pretty much everything on there. You're just not going to get any of the, the holographic magic that you get from the actual device. And then here you have all these other things you can tackle like gaze, gesture, voice, spatial sound, spatial mapping, and sharing holograms. So it's um, from the developer side of things, this is the best way to get started. Learn Unity, then go do our tutorials, and then you'll be up and running, and then, and then you can start adopting things like the Holo Toolkit. And we cover this topic more and more also at different meetups, and especially at mine in New York. So if you're interested in doing some of this, then you can start tackling it today. So I can take uh, some more questions if you want. Yes, uh, Nick, thank you very much. Uh, we have time for a couple quick questions for Nick. I see a hand in the back. We'll wait for the microphone. Yep. Was keep, this useful for you guys? Keep it you, quick. Is that good? Yeah. Just want to know, make sure that I didn't waste anybody's time today. So thank you. Um, I was curious if HoloLens is working on uh, VR, like complete occlusion for uh, complete immersion, or is that something that uh, Microsoft's not as interested in? Well, uh, so what I explained at the beginning is that um, if I go back, in my in my deck here, we have uh, on the on the Windows mixed reality the Hololens itself is a mixed reality holographic headset, which means that you can actually see uh, everything through it. So if I go back here, so that's the Hololens. Basically, you can see everything through it. When I explain our spectrum here, if I click all of that again, so we have the holographic headsets. That's the Hololens, and we have the immersive headsets. So the other six partners that I've listed there, Acer, Asus, Dell, HP, Lenovo, and Three Glasses, what they are creating are immersive mixed reality headsets, which means that you cannot see through them. They're more like, like virtual reality, but they're still mixed reality because they offer the same inside out tracking, six degrees of freedom experience, and it's the same as DK. So for, as a developer, you just build the application once using one platform, one SDK, one set of tools, and then you create one application, and then you can use this application either on immersive headsets, more like a VR experience, or on holographic headsets like the HoloLens. So yes, we're definitely interested in both, and we're not here to say that one is better than the other. They're for different purposes. For collaboration, education, sharing, holographic displays are awesome, but the moment you want to go into more like immersive experience like gaming or really like touring a facility of some kind that's remote or whatever or a site, then yeah, you can't beat immersive experiences like uh, immersive MR and virtual reality. Does that answer your question? Oh, both in the same headset. Okay, thanks. Um, 
right now, there's nothing that's been announced for this. So there's nothing that can stop one of our partners from doing it. As you know, the Microsoft model for the longest time has always been we provide a software platform and our partners are building the hardware. Like a Windows computer, it's only in recent years that you could buy a Surface. Before that, it was always all partners like Toshiba, Dell, HP, Lenovo, and so on that provide the hardware. We've opened up Windows Mixed Reality to our partners, so they can actually build whatever they want. There's already been some discussions, and people have asked for a way, for example, to have an immersive headset that would have cameras, for example, that you could see the world around you, but then if you turn off the cameras, then you go into full VR mode. I, I think it's a safe bet that it's something like this that's going to come eventually. Our platform basically is ready for it. It's going to be up to a partner to build it. I can't speak for our partners, and I'm just speculating at this point, so don't take my word for it. All right? Cool. The Electronic Software Association yes. um, did a survey of indie devs in games, yep. and 20% are investing development in VR, yep. and a majority indicate that they think AR will win in the long term. Is this essentially the bet that Microsoft has made? I don't like this notion of that one thing has to win over another. Can't there be room for both? Because first of all, <laughs> no, but seriously, that's, that's why we created Windows Mixed Reality. Because, yeah, we have the immersive headsets that are more like a VR experience, and we have the holographic headsets that are more like a better version of AR. So they're both going to be required. They're both going to exist. There's experiences in VR that you're just not going to be as effective in the MR and vice versa. So I agree that for everyday use, you're probably going to see a lot more see-through holographic mixed reality scenarios than pure immersive VR experiences. Gaming is probably going to stay in the realm of VR because it's just so immersive. You can create like, I just can't wait to play Fallout in VR, I can tell you that. Um, or Skyrim or whichever games comes next, you know? So the idea is that there's going to be room for both. At the same time, something like the HoloLens today pretty much stands alone in holographic displays. And it's not exactly a consumer device today. You know, it's not priced for consumers. This is a premium device. This is not a toy. And that's why we're targeting primarily for developers and the enterprise. And so for, for, if a developer wants to write a game for this, fine. But the only people that have a HoloLens today are other developers. So it's not exactly, there's not really a consumer market for this. But again, because mixed reality, Windows mixed reality is the same API in a same development model, you could create your game to run on both, basically, either on holographic or immersive. And then once we start seeing those headsets coming out this year for mixed reality starting at 300 bucks, now you've got a developer market. And we also announced also that Project Scorpio, which is our next iteration of the Xbox One, is coming out later in the coming year. And this one is, gonna, is built for virtual reality. And as you know, the Xbox is essentially a Windows 10 computer, right? It's been optimized for gaming. So it's all part of the same ecosystem. And it's the same development model. Building a game or an app for the Xbox is also the universal Windows platform that is the same and open to all Windows 10 developers. We want developers to build their code once and run it basically on a full gamut of devices. We even bought Xamarin so they can bring their C-sharp code to iOS and Android. So it's, yeah. It, it's going to be a whole world of possibilities, but it's not a question of one winning over the other. I think there's room for both, and it will be part of both. Yes. Hi. Um, I'm curious about the use of the camera. Um, you may have covered this. Um, when you use the camera, can you record things around you just for storage later? For example, could I record myself with a hollow lens and then uh, collaborate with someone while wearing it and they're wearing theirs type of thing. Yes, so uh, definitely the, the camera, it's an HD camera that's on it um, and basically you can either record, so I can basically just say like, hey Cortana, start recording and then she'll start recording for me and everything that's being recorded, you, it's going to report and now Cortana just woke up on my computer. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's okay, cancel. Um, so the idea is that everything that you see, holograms included, will be recorded as well. So that's more of a static recording. If what you want to do is more of a sharing experience with someone... Say like a rehearsal. You know, musicians rehearsing more than once for the same material. I mean, yes. The answer is yes, you can do it. Uh, but, the, for example, uh, one of the, the ways that the camera is used out of the box with the HoloLens is we have a, a preview, uh, basically a, a special version of Skype for the HoloLens. So when you run this Skype version, 
and you run a Skype preview on your computer, you can basically have one person wearing a HoloLens joining a Skype call. They will see like a little video display like window that they can place wherever they want of the other person at the other end looking through their tablet or their, their device. And then um, the other end, the, the computer user, for example, on Skype or the tablet user would then see what the HoloLens user sees. But more than just strapping a GoPro to your forehead, the person at the other end, for example, let's say that they're walking the HoloLens user through a complicated set of instructions, like how to, I don't know, change uh, something on your sink or your toilet or how to rewire a, a light switch uh, or, or any advanced thing like that that requires like skills. They can actually start drawing on their tablet on the visual display, like on the camera view of the user, and the HoloLens user will see these drawings appearing in midair in front of them. So they can tell them, like, take this thing, turn it this way. We're using this right now, just to give you an idea. There's a couple of HoloLenses right now on the International Space Station. So that one of the many scenarios they're using it for is whenever these astronauts have to do these advanced operations around something they've never done before, there's an expert on the ground that can walk them through it. And they can physically point at things and draw for them. And if you, they draw for you and you look away and you come back, it's there. It's not the kind of thing that just moves around with you, you know, like augmented reality. Again, it's locked to your space. So yes, the camera is available. You can integrate it with your, with your developer solutions. There's an API for it. So if you want to create a new kind of experience for people, for example, to uh, experience a creative uh, process, like you said, maybe musicians are rehearsing, and maybe the musicians are not there, or the actors are not there, or whatever, uh, you can actually bring them together this way. Nick Landry, thank you so much. Thank you, folks. Thank you.